hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of Kitchen Conversations. I'm Andrea and you're in the secret kitchen. And you know, it's only fitting that my very first guest on Kitchen Conversations should be my partner in kitchen crime. Absolutely crime. So to speak, it is a crime. Chef Umberto Torelli. I'm glad to be the first one here. Yes. <laughs> here we are, finally. People in the secret kitchen. So, yeah, you know, for people who don't know, I, I said this in my promo, but, you know, I had done a radio show, and the thing is that I wanted to get back to the opportunity to actually speak to people and talk about food experiences. So, my very first guest, Chef Umberto, and we're going to start off by talking a little bit about where did, you know, you have a passion for cooking and food, and where did it come from? Well... It's like I have in all my bios and everything that I've done, it starts from mom. I grew up um, in a small apartment in downtown Passaic, and my mom, especially Sundays, Sundays was the day we came home from church and my mother would start with a porpette, which is meatballs. And that's one of our signatures at our restaurant is the, you know, mother of all meatballs, we call ourselves. My mom would fry her meatballs with her special recipe and... and it was amazing. It got to the point where my her brothers and my cousins would come, and those meatballs never made it into the sauce. They were right. coming out of the frying Just... pan right into their mouths. So seeing the, the passion that she created when she took to the kitchen and stuff like that, and how the family couldn't wait to taste, and then the chicken cutlets, the Sunday sauce that we made, and all the other things. My passion, first and foremost, comes from my mom. So how old were you when you first started, like, huh, I think this is pretty cool. I want to be part of this. I always loved to dabble, but when I started realizing, I took char I, I went to work in a pizzeria. Actually, they call them the Greek Connections, the Mr. Pizzas, <laughs> up in North Jersey. Uh, one of my best friends, uh, Saggy Lambrus, Got me a part-time job. I was on a soccer team and stuff. So I started working at Romeo's Pizza, Mr. Pizza. And I started saying, wow, besides making pizza and stuff, I used to love going in the kitchen, playing around with recipes, and and to see people's faces when they enjoy the food. Mm -hmm. So I started saying, wow, maybe it's something you know, I want to do. But let me tell you, I've been through so many different things, but this is the one thing that stuck. Pizza. Pizza and food, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we should tell everyone. So, uh, you are currently have a restaurant in Tom's River. Why don't you just share that? Yeah. And we'll, I, put, we'll put all this in the comments, too. We have Z Marie's Original Pizza. <clears throat> and we also have Sweet Z's Cafe. It's a little bit of a nostalgia. Uh, you know, come to summer, we do the Brooklyn Egg Creams. Uh, we have great coffee, breakfast sandwiches. We push Opco Donuts. We're a distributor for Opco, which if you're a South Jersey. Oh, Opco. Opco is like dear to the heart. A moment of silence for yes. Opco. They're the best. Yeah. yeah, and then we do the Italian stuff for the holidays, Italian mm -hmm. pastries, you know, cakes and stuff like that. Z Marie's is basically a little hole in the wall. And what happened was after COVID, we lost our dining area because we had to work out the back. So that whole back end started becoming for pizza, for delivery guys, and I made it my office. As things started, you know, getting to open up, it's a small diner, so we opened up the little, the little you know, uh, atrium outside, which we <clears> call <throat> it the Garden Cafe, and right. that seats about 30, 40 people outside. And then little by little, we started opening up a little bit of the dining room inside, which now we call it Aziz Hole in the Wall, because a lot of our customers are big Frank Sinatra Rat Pack fans, and if anyone follows them, they know that they used to hang out in a place in Las Vegas called Batista's Hole in the Wall. So we figured, Google that like I did. You'll find yes. out all about it. Mm -hmm. And so we created that where four nights a week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we have three seatings: four o'clock, seven, uh, four o'clock, seven o'clock, uh, seven thirty, and then uh, no, I'm sorry, four o'clock, five thirty, and seven o'clock. I apologize. Those are our three seatings that we do those four days, and you know. It's a small place. It's a hole in the wall, but it's cute. You've been there, you know. Yes, of course. I love it. Well, you know, I, I'm a big fan of your everything that you cook. Now, all right, so you are a small business owner, and you have been for a while now. And so, uh, obviously, Sandy, the pandemic, uh, 
Yeah, New Jersey itself. New, Jer New Jersey itself. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. And so, yeah, well, for what for whatever it is, it happened. As a small business owner, I we're hold him dear to my heart. We're still recovering. Yes. You know, even even you know, in my day job, things are still recovering from uh, from the pandemic and whatnot. But that kind of helped us fuel another passion that we're involved and in. And we didn't even know, did we? No. You know, we got to tell people a little bit about the history here, too. Years ago, now that we're doing, you know, kitchen conversations, I mean, come on. What was one of the interviews you did many years ago before? So, yeah, so, um, you know, because I had a radio show, and it was on a Block Talk Radio, Internet Radio. It was called Jersey Coastal Live. I did it for five and a half years. And one of my guests on my radio show was Chef Umberto. I mean, wow, that was really crazy that that all happened that that was a long time ago. that was a long time ago it was it was a long time ago i think it was like 2007 i don't remember the year in that, in that it's area. still up it's still up on blog talk radio we could go listen to it but so that was the, that's when we kind of we kind of first met and i interviewed a lot of chefs i i i was i'm because i'm always drawn to that too and you know the common denominator by the way is always like a mom a grandma you know, in the kitchen at an early, I mean, your classic, classic story. Yeah. That's where, that's where the love of food came from. But anyway, I, I couldn't do my radio show anymore because frankly, it was interfering with my day job. It was, I was putting so much passion into it. So I, you know, Secret Kitchens of New Jersey, which of course I'm loving and I appreciate everyone's support, but I wanted that opportunity, uh, you know, to talk to people and that's where we have kitchen conversations. But uh, we also have another venture called What's Cooking, What's Cooking, Jersey Cookin'. Shore. Cooking, I-N. And that's where it's kind of, well, you, you talk a little bit about what we're doing with that. Well, what happened was What's Cooking started years ago right. with Mizar Tardu, which was the anchor woman nominated for a daytime Emmy uh, on News 12. And we had a great thing going. And, you know, because of other things, it just didn't grow as much as it you know was supposed to and i went through a couple people here and there as you know mm -hmm. and it never worked and the one day you pop into the mini mall i did i there i was because i was at a, actually like at a work event and oddly enough my my vendor table was stationed literally across from the um bakery yeah and i'm thinking oh my god i'll be staring at donuts all day this is cruel and then i look up for a moment and you walk by, and I just thought to myself, "Is that could that be?" And and it was. It was the, you. Like I said, the stars aligned because I'm never there. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm there very, very because I'm at the pizzeria and I'm doing other stuff. And the rest is history. We started putting things together, and what's cooking was born. And you know, it took a while for us to figure it out, but what we're doing, yeah, is basically <clears> we <throat> do it. It's a labor of love for both of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I sponsor, you know, as much as I can of the show and stuff. And we're going out, we're reviewing businesses because we both feel the same way about it. A passion or just a love for small family owned businesses. Yes. Small businesses that have been through the mill. And I know firsthand because I've right. been through it. Right. You know, you get hit with Sandy, you get destroyed. I lost two businesses, <laughs> I lost the house. You bounce back onto your feet. If it's not one thing or another, now we get a pandemic. You know, and I can't begin to say how much businesses have suffered. Small businesses, mom yeah. and pops, they haven't gotten the the grants that they deserve. It's just <clears> amazing <throat> how the small businesses got overlooked. So our little bit that we're doing, we're helping, and we're we're showcasing some of the. Yeah, so we are really shining a light on these small family-owned businesses, and um, every because every one of them has an amazing story. And you know we're do we're, we're doing a review because we want we want to draw attention to them. We want people to go to these restaurants and enjoy them. They are you know they show perseverance, absolute true grit, right? That yeah, they're still They survived Sandy. They survived the pandemic, and they have the passion. You know the fire. Yeah. is what keeps yeah. them going. We go to some places that it's an inspiration. Like you know one place has been around. My God, over sixty years. Yes. And yes. you hear the family story and what they've been through and how they, were, they were, were raised with the business. You go to another place, construction, everything's done, 
and they gotta sit out six months paying rent, can't even open. Then when they finally open, it's you gotta buy tents, you gotta buy chairs, because it's outdoor yeah, social yeah, distancing. In the middle of the pandemic. And yet, somehow, they survived. The resolve of New Jersey. Yeah, and they have a great story, and it's uh, that is a separate channel on YouTube called What's Cooking Jersey Shore. Please subscribe. Yes. We need your support. So do small businesses. Yeah, and and that's really uh, we. Didn't, I think you're right. We didn't even realize at first that that was that was our that was really our purpose. Well, because we didn't we didn't monetary what we always say listen we're doing it because we a, love it's doing a it it's a labor of love put it out there yeah. it'll come back and that's basically what we're looking at we're putting it out there we're helping out as much as we can doing our part to help out our little jersey shore mom and mm -hmm. pop hole in the walls little eateries little boutiques whatever and listen if anyone out there that listens knows a little place you know that, that is your favorite place please Go on the comments and and let us know, and we'll do our best to get out there. Yes, and, definitely, because that that's that's the mission to go out and shine a light. And we do reviews, and if it's a different type of place, we'll even feature them, tell their story, tell people. I mean, some of the stories we've had really tug to the heart, you know, to the heartstrings. Yeah, I was a little unprepared for that, you know, to be misting up during, you know, I'm holding me. So I'm behind the scenes in that one. Yeah, but and you're the mastermind behind well, it, Well, that's though. a different role for me. And I feel like, you know, for um, Secret Kitchens, and even right now, you know, uh, Jim, who's our cameraman and yeah. our sound engineer. What's you up, know. Jim? Shout out to Jim. No to so him. I am doing my best to channel Jim when, I, when, I'm, when I'm working the camera. But I, I love it. I love both of them equally. But I, I love the fact that we're, we're going out, we're meeting people, and... Um, who survived and thrived and I, I i love getting the story you know for me that's what it's and all we got about. some growth coming from that people look out yeah. for it yeah we have another real secret kitchen that we're probably going to be in yeah and we're going to feature a couple other chefs and we're even looking at doing some progressive dinners mm -hmm. where it's going to be myself another sh uh, chef from that's from the restaurant and maybe one or two other chefs featuring a four you know a four course dinner that part of the proceeds are going to go to a charity that's very dear to my heart uh oceans of love um i have march of dimes and oceans of love but oceans of love focuses on you know people in our area you know little little children in our area that are affected with you know cancer and diseases and linda gillick does a great job they have the billboard a -thon. and like i said i'm very very fond of it i even through the pandemic i always make it my business if not too much money's raised i scrape up whatever i can and i bring it myself because mm -hmm. it's definitely mm -hmm. a good good place good place to put your money well, you know, you're a community-minded guy. You're a small businessman. That's why it's such a great fit for you uh, to be the reviewer because, well, you know firsthand what it takes to run a restaurant. And, uh, well, I love lis I personally love listening to you describe the food. And you can tell when I really am excited about a place. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it is exci it's exciting to, you know, be part of it. Yes. And thank you all for your support. And we are definitely growing. And uh, it, it's great It's great to feel like we're doing something in a really positive way. We're putting it back out there. I know. I, 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 really, I really do love that. Um, we're going to have lots of people coming in the secret kitchen to, you know, again, to share their story. Because everyone has a kitchen. Everyone yeah. has a kitchen table. Maybe not with a cloth like this on it, but... By the way, this is my appeals to my hippie sensibility. Yes, hippie sense. You know, all the overgrown hippies like me. Um, so let's let's talk. Let's go back to you a little bit more because we're not quite done with you. Okay. You got a lot going on too. So you're also writing a book about your experiences in life. Yes. Because um, you didn't have enough to do. No, you know, you know what happened. Believe it or not, I'm the first one that was approached with this. And my other two friends, which you know, Joey Armenio uh, and Stiletto, uh, zero, zero to 60, he already put his, boat, uh, his book out. <laughs> and then there's Peter Fishback, which you know him also. Um, he's got hog candy. They already put all their stuff on. Everybody's looking at me like, when are you going to do yours? So I've got the rough part of it, and it's volume one. And the book is called... Bird of, all, Bird of All Trades, Master of Some. And this is volume one, the early years. I'm hoping 
that by the beginning of the summer it'll be out on Amazon. Um, but it's cool. It talks about the trials and tribulations of growing up Italian. And it's got funny stories, stories that'll, you know, touch the heart. And a lot of, you know, I, I put out a lot of recipes with the story. So it's not just... Wait a you minute. Know, You're Italian? <laughs> can't you tell? Can't yeah. you tell? Yeah. That's funny, too, talking Italian. Now we're, we're starting to see some of our other places. Can Everyone I tell you that it is such a crazy thing to me that we go places and you and the other owners or other people, they're all speaking Italian. Yeah. I did not expect it that. And the small business world, especially here in New Jersey, some parts of Staten Island, Brooklyn, it's amazing what a small world it is. Yeah. Everyone knows someone. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and that's why we're all connected. It's like a family, so we all got to do our part because people, the most important thing, and I, I implore you guys as, as the audience, you know, small businesses, we're nothing without the people. And you have to support the small business. You know, like they talk about big pharma and stuff like this. It's the same thing with these big chains. They don't need you. You know, they they just as well toss you to the side. Small businesses, we appreciate every single person that comes in and patronizes our places. And that's why and, uh, Andrea and right. I are out there doing what we're doing. <clears throat> yeah. The, the, the other places don't need us to go and do a review. No. And but that's not our thing. Our passion is to spotlight the small, small business. Small businesses. Yeah. And like we said, it doesn't have to be a restaurant or an eatery. It can be a, your favorite hot dog place, your favorite hamburger joint. If there's a little boutique that you like, a winery, a brewery, <clears throat> a distillery, we'll go check them out. If they're a little independent, they're a little hole in the walls, the smaller hole in the wall that it is, the better it is for us because we found that most of the good meals are coming from them places. Absolutely true. Yeah, I, I love even like all the little hot dog places. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I'm, you know, people talk about fine dining. Well, I always say fine dining is fine. Yeah. But I am, have always been more drawn to the more hole in the wall places. Yeah. Because I just feel that that's where, that's where it's at. It's really... What you're going to get in a small atmosphere, a small place, is that good, wholesome food that comforts the stomach and comforts the soul. You know, and that's that's what we we try to do. Somewhat like perfect example, us. We're comfort comfort food with an mm -hmm. attitude sometimes, but that's what we really are. <laughs> but I feel like, well, in a small place like that, you're really getting the direct input of the chef. He's he or she is really doing exactly what they want to do, and experimenting yes, probably. Yes. And that doesn't always happen in a chef Jeff. Remember what he said? Yes. He liked the people. He was always told that he was, as he was little, Jeff, again, I'm going to bring you up. And uh, that's Chef Jeff Johnson at Ott's Good Earth out in West Creek. West He's Creek. another fantastic chef. Um, he said he was always told as a little kid, don't play with your food. But that's right. what he does. He right. plays and with his food. And now he knows you, it's great to play with your food. Yep. So yeah. So we've, we've had some... Some great places uh, that we've gone we've gone to visit. I know in our horizons is Indian coming up. Yeah. I know we have some hot dogs <clears> coming <throat> up. I don't remember where the place is, but I told you that's in the next couple of weeks. Then we have a nice place down in South Jersey. I believe it's Absecon. So we got our we got we got our travel set up for us. So we release those videos also every Saturday morning. We might do an extra one during the week, but routinely on Saturday mornings. And, uh, you know, again, please become a subscriber and patronize these small businesses because they need you. They really do. And, and they're worth it. They're the, so worth it. Absolutely. And the subscriptions, folks, that's what's going to help us to get to the plateau we need to be at so we can keep doing this. You know, I'm going to call it a labor of love because it's basically these small businesses are in the same place that I've been. And it's, you know, in order to keep them alive, we have to help each other. It's a tough, you know, it's a tough world. I think New Jersey is a tough state. But I think it, it is a tough thing to have a food business. I, Absolutely. I, I, I really do. It, you know, it's, people are, feel very strongly, yay or nay, about what comes on their plate, don't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But like you, to go back to what you said, it's very, become very hard. New Jersey is in particular, we've had eggs go up as high as, I mean, my God, it was $9 a dozen at one point. It's ridiculous. I was paying for 15 dozen before everything happened. I was paying, you know, $17 for 15 dozen eggs, and they were up as high as $82. Do you realize how high certain chicken, you know, uh, beef, mm -hmm. everything, everything in yeah. general, 
You know, so it's it's hard. It's hard. Businesses try to hang on, try not to raise their prices because you know they feel for the customers. But you know, uh, support support. But the key word is business, yeah. and, and I get it. Everyone has to. Um, well, we pay the price. Um, we can't help it. Our prices are going up everywhere. Yeah. So when when people get angry in a restaurant, like look how much they're charging for this or that, but. The shop right and stop and shop and all. I mean, I it, use the a, best one to my customers that turn around like they look. They'll come to the counter. Oh my God, a pizza sixteen sixty for a plain cheese pizza. <laughs> I said, first of all, we're still cheap for a sixteen inch pizza. I said, but do you go to the gas station and give the attendant? Oh that yeah, attitude? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. come on, let's face it. They're talking this year. Gas prices may go up in the summer, close to five bucks, a, you know, a gallon. But we don't bitch and we still drive. Yes, we're still putting gas in the tank because we have to get wherever we have to go. I still have to go to work and put gas. Yeah, I know. And I think if a lot of people really did the math, it's still cheaper to go out to eat than to go out shop sometimes and make certain things yourself. These days, for sure. And you get pampered, <laughs> you get taken care of, and you don't have to clean dishes. You know, so. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, lots of restaurants waiting for us, and um, I just can't wait to, you know, share it with everybody, and I can't wait to bring more people into the Secret Kitchen, get your story. You know, we just had Easter, and so what was what would be an, in, when, from your childhood, what was an Easter like in your family? Well, that's what I tried to do this Sunday, because um, Carol, you know, my other half, um, we went to her mom's house. Her mom's 92 years old. And what touched me the most, at the end of the dinner, she goes, my God, this was like the old buffets that we used to have. Oh. I was told to make two things. And I made two things, the first and the last, because I got a lot of my mother in me. And I made risotto. It was an exotic mushroom. But what I did was I ground down the mushroom, the dry mushrooms. And I used it when I, when I, uh, I sauteed my onions and my rice before I deglazed it with the white wine, I you, used the mushroom, exotic mushroom powder to infuse that nice mushroom wow, flavor. Wow, that I, And then I went awesome. ahead and did my risotto. So that was dish number one. Then I had leg of lamb. I did a Napoleon style leg of lamb that was rubbed and I kept it in the rub and I, I vacuum packed it and let it sit for three days. So it really marinated, tenderized it. And then I roasted it um, and made my own demi-glaze with uh, uh, a Merlot demi-glaze with uh, the mirepoix in it and everything. And so we had that for topping. So we had the lamb. Then I did some um, Florida grouper with the lemon white wine butter sauce. And then of course you gotta have your sides. So I had my, bro uh, my brown butter, sage, bacon, bu uh, Brussels sprouts. I had the roasted potatoes. I made German influence. I made her some German mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm, she loves mm -hmm. coleslaw. And then, of course, then you got dessert. I made sfogliadels. I had the Italian pasta rusti uh, pizza rustica, which is the pizza cane. And, of course, the wheat pie. So they were all upset. You know, she was upset. Me. Yeah, it's too much food, but we made a memory. Yes, you know, but that's that's the whole thing. It's I, it's the memory. You made a memory. To see her mom that yeah, happy. That's awesome. Something that hasn't happened because... Her side, of, her side of family, the, the brother and, and her brother and the sister-in-law, they, they made, we still had prime rib too. And then asparagus and other oh sides God. from them and other, various pies. I mean, there were six of us and there was enough food for 20. Uh, 20, 40. But it brought memories of being at mom's table. Yeah, which is what holidays are all about. And that's what food's all about. But now I have to go back to something you said. So you took dried mushrooms because I'm totally doing okay, this. Okay, if you get you took dried mushrooms. Yeah, they have they have the um, restaurant depot carries it. I have exotic, them in my pantry right mushrooms. now. Exotic mushrooms. It's porcini, chanterelles, uh, shiitake, cremi uh, cremini. It's all dried out, and you have to have that little coffee grinder. Yes. I have a special one that I've had for years. I, I'll kill somebody if they ever touch it. But I grind them down to a powder. To a, okay. And I leave it to the side, and when you start. Risotto is like is like a passion and a science. When you're doing risotto, you start with your good olive oil on the bottom. You caramel, you you get your uh, um, onions nice and translucent, and where you start to smell. And I like to use a Vidalia onion or a shallot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once you start to get that nice flavor, then you take your your arborio rice, your your rice. Oh, mix, the rice. I'm sorry. Okay. In, you start toasting that a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Once that gets going. Then you throw your mushroom powder in, 
Then you deglaze it with the white wine. Now you got that nice fragrance coming up. And then you start adding your chicken stock, vegetable stock, whatever your, <coughs> your star of the show is gonna be. I use vegetable stock because we were featuring vegetables. And you just, you have to watch it. Constantly stir it, and next thing you know, it becomes creamy. At the end, I add a little bit of butter to add the creaminess. And if you want, a little bit of heavy cream. And you salt and paper, you know, use your salt and pepper to taste. Did you and that's a quick recipe right now. Wow. So let, I have to go back to the mushrooms because now I'm obsessed. I'm totally going to do phenomenal. this. It's phenomenal. So could you use a high-powered blender or a food processor? Yeah, but you got to be able to... You got to really pulverize. Yeah, well, if, in order to pulverize them, if you got you got that small food processor, that might work. You have that little one still. Yeah, I have. I have. That a, might. Yeah. But what happens is when you have that grinder, it's a nice little dome but, shape. But you know what? I do have my. Sp I have a coffee grinder and a that spice grinder. That works All right, maybe. All right. That because you got to get that powder. Oh, see, that's why we're here today. Yeah. See? Find, get those nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's definitely going to be on Secret Kitchens in one form or another. All right. I, I love the idea. You talked me into it. <laughs> I will. It, you know, it's something I will, oh, I will yeah. come. Because yeah, that's I another comment. I haven't been around. I, I, I would apologize. No, we're forgiving you. I would like you to make risotto with the mushrooms like it's that. It's phenomenal. Because that would be an awesome thing. And oh show God, everyone how to grind up the mushrooms. Yes. Totally yes. something different. That's. We'll definitely talk about that. Definitely. Well, thank you for being my first guest. No, thank you. My I tell you that all the time when we're out now. This woman is a blessing to me. It was a, a love that I had of doing something that was taken out of me because it became too corporate. And that's not, she knows me. That's really not what I'm about. I'm not a corporate person. I mean, let's face it, we all have to make money. So I'm not going to be full of crap and say money doesn't matter. Sadly, but, we need money. But... There's certain things that, you know, you can't put a price on. And she came along, and I'm loving things again. And it gave me a gave me another added boost to do what I do what I love to do, which is these reviews, cooking segments. And it's my love, too. And, you know, but it's all about working with the right person. And, uh, you know, our cameraman wants us to hold up our book, Bert's book again so he can get it. Not that you can't get it right now, but soon enough it'll be on Amazon. I'm hoping, yeah, yeah. Finish it up. I'm going to finish it up. You're probably going to take a good look at it for me. Be on Amazon. Very cool. Very cool. So we appreciate everyone's support. It really means it means the world to me, and I, I, I'm sincere about that, and to you as well. So What's Cooking Jersey Shore, please like and subscribe. Continue with Secret Kitchens of New Jersey. You're really, you're helping us help those small businesses in New Jersey, and that's really, that's where we want to be. And our special word, right? Beshert. Beshert. You came into my life again. It was something Beshert. that was meant to be. And you know what? And it's showing. It's like I always say, you put it out there, it comes back. I, I can't thank you enough, really. If you don't know what Beshert means, Google it. Yes. I'm not even going to tell you. All right, everybody. Episode one, uh, Kitchen Conversations, done deal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. It's a playlist on Secret Kitchens of New Jersey. Please like and subscribe. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bert. Bye-bye. Thank you.